Did you know your brake fluid could be bad? Hello and welcome back to Zeke's Garage. Today I have a public service announcement for you. Did you know your brake fluid could be bad? I was uh, reached out to by the Tessman company and they said they'd send me this tool if I'd review it in a video for them. And I thought, okay, that's intriguing. Um, I didn't know my brake fluid could be bad, to be honest with you, so I've learned quite a bit. They sent me this guy about 30 days ago, and to be honest with you, I've been doing some research since about then, and I'm a little late getting this out. But uh, I decided that this was worth a full feature video instead of just a short. So uh, here you go, I'm going to tell you what I've learned. And uh, we're gonna play with some brake fluid here a little bit. So this is a brake fluid tester. It will test dot three, dot four, and dot five brake fluids, okay? So what the heck's wrong with your brake fluid and how can it go bad? Well, most brake fluid, dot three and dot four, is hydroscopic. And that means that it will absorb moisture from the air. Well, Carl, isn't my brake system sealed? Kinda. This here gasket that most brake systems are sealed with a lid like this, they only seal with this gasket. Now you know as time goes on and oil and all of that stuff eats into this rubber, it's gonna get hard and it's gonna let air into that system. Then exposing your brake fluid to, to the air where it can absorb moisture. So I did say that most brake fluid is hydroscopic. Dot five brake fluid is hydrophobic. Now hydrophobic means that it repels water. So, well there it is, simple, right? I'll just put dot five in everything I own. No, wrong answer. Dot five brake fluid is not compliant with ABS systems. So everything from about 1990 up has ABS and uh, dot five isn't gonna work in it. So dot three and dot four is your ABS system stuff and dot five is pretty much only good for classic vehicles like these two right here. So, how the heck do you test your brake fluid? Well, here's the little tester they sent me. Like I said, it come in this here box, come with a nice case, some instructions, and uh, let's let's do this. Let's do this on camera for you guys. Let's show you how this works. So I'm gonna open up the scrambler. This is a 1982 scrambler. And uh, I have no idea the last time the brake fluid was changed or even worked on. So to power this guy on, I'm just gonna push and hold the power button until it powers up. It's already selected to dot three, and I believe that's what's in it. But if I thought it was dot four, I could just put the push the little S button. It says dot four, and then it says dot five right there. So I'm gonna change it back to dot three, and then all you do is you put the little probe in the in the brake fluid. That's it. You don't touch any buttons or anything. Okay, that's giving me a, what, a 2.5 there, 2.4, which is marginal, and that's why it's beeping. So this brake fluid is marginal, telling me that, yeah, it's okay right now, but I probably ought to think about changing it in the future. So I thought, okay, that's interesting. What about these bottles of brake fluid that I've had on my shelf here in the garage that are open? You know, the seals are broken on them. This one here I've had, I'm gonna say for about a year on the shelf in the garage. And this guy here was open just recently, a matter of months, I'd say. And they say that these guys here, if they sit in your garage in an open state like this, are usually only good for about six months. So I know this one's, uh, been open less than six months and I know this one's been open more than six months so uh, let me clean this tester off good and let's put it in this guy first and we'll test that six month theory right here it's dot three I'm gonna make sure I'm set to I'm still set to dot three we're gonna go in and test it All right, we got a 2.4, 2.3, and a beep telling me it's marginal. So, like I said, this has been open, I'm going to say about a year, maybe a little longer. 
So, I don't know, should I throw this away? Maybe. Says it's still good. The fluid in the Jeep's still good. So, I'm not one that's gonna, you know, for a marginal reading, I'm not gonna go to the hassle of changing it. And speaking of that, we'll talk about how to change it here in a minute. But let's test this one that's been open less than six months. Let's get this one closed back up since it shouldn't be exposed to the air, right? Close her back up tight. Okay, let's get this one open. And let's have a look at this. Oh, this one is, this one's dot four. Let's change the setting to dot four. Okay, dot four selected. We're going in. Okay, look at that. I don't have a warning beep. And we've got a reading of 1.3 there. So it says this one's still really good. Okay, I'm gonna make sure I don't get this on my paint because brake fluid does eat your paint. So be super careful when you're playing with this over your paint. It will eat your paint. Okay, so I wanna know what a bad reading looks like, don't you? Let's see, let's uh, let's uh, let's take this guy. Let's put a little brake fluid, this stuff that's really good. Let's pour it in here. About like that. Seal this bag up. And I got a cup of water right over here. This is just tap water. Okay, look how cloudy that got pretty cloudy to the view right there. And that was dot four. I'm still set to dot four. Let's have a look. There you go. There's a bad brake fluid reading right there. Red indicator. <clears throat> so, cool. Now we know what a bad one looks like. Clean this up here. Okay, so we've got our tests over with, and let's talk about what to do if we know we need to change the system. How do we change it? Good question. There's lots of good answers. There's probably no right answer. How about everybody has their own way? But let me tell you about how I'd go about it. I'd take the old lid off the system here. I'd get me a turkey baster, and I'd suck out as much as I could out of the top here, put it in a disposable container, get rid of it properly, and then I'd open up each wheel cylinder and I'd let it gravity, gravity bleed. Just drip, drip, drip until it quit dripping. And then I believe I'd get me my air compressor and I'd blow a little compressed air into the system and make sure I got all of it out of it. I'd leave the, the wheel cylinders open. I'd go in with my new and I'd wait until all four wheel cylinders were dripping. I'd lock all four wheel cylinders down. I'd fill my reservoir. And then I'd start at the longest hose, which is usually the passenger side rear. And then I'd start my, my pressure bleeding, pumping the pedal up and cracking the bleeder and getting the air out of the system. So that's, that's the way I'd approach it. Your, your system may vary, but uh, that's how I'd take care of it if we had to change the brake fluid. So uh, I appreciate Tessman for reaching out to me and giving me this here cool tool and teaching me something that I didn't really know about that... Uh, I should have known about it sounds like so anyway public service announcement there you go a little more about brake fluid that you probably didn't know maybe you did maybe you're smarter than me good for you um <laughs> thanks for watching